Today, we are going to talk about long call input butterflies. These are one of my favorite ways personally to directionally trade. So I'm going to show you how we build these. We will talk about the Greeks for a brief moment, and then we'll spend the second half really on the options play tool. And I'll go through some real examples of how we would structure these if it makes sense or if it doesn't. Um, but if you've heard me talk about broken wing butterflies, we'll talk about that in excessive detail today, especially if you feel very largely directional in something, you have clear points of resistance. So I'll walk you through that process. Really excited for today's session. This is something, again, like I said, I, I've trained personally quite a bit. And naturally, before we get started, no, this is for informational and educational pur purposes only. This is not personal financial advice. Financial advice is a personal thing, and this is certainly not that. This is not intended to be tax, legal, or investment planning advice. We are going to use real symbols. Those are just for informational purposes only. Haven't done the full due diligence process when we bring up those securities, we will talk about it. So just be aware of that when we discuss the topics at hand today. All right. Love talking about the Greeks all the time, but especially when we talk about directional trading. If you attended the last session, we were back to the basics and now we're going to the other end of the spectrum and going a little more advanced and we're going to talk about how we'll utilize really long calls and long puts and build on them to maximize the positive factors and minimize the negative factors. So first and foremost, it's extremely important that we understand how each of these worked and the positive and the negative factors, because we're gonna utilize everything on the call side for a directional bullish side and everything on the put side for a directional put side to be layered, our, our, our directional downward side, by the way to be layered appropriately with those positive and negative factors. So just a quick review for those who haven't seen the fully built out Greek slide, walk you through it, calls on the left, puts on the right, long calls, purchase for a premium, which means we can execute upon them, long puts, purchase for a premium, since they're purchased, we are on the execution rights, short options are sold, we have the obligation. When we buy options, we are buying time that's working against us because it is a negative factor. So it's a negative theta. Theta just means the extrinsic value component of the option. So that's why time decay is negative. As the option decays each day, it does go down in value. When we purchase options, because we've purchased the right to execute and what we've purchased has a decaying factor component to it, it means we profit from a sharp movement in our desired direction. So from the long call, it's a sharp upwards movement because it's a bullish position. Long put, it's a sharp downwards movement because it's a bearish position. And so Delta just tells you in this regard, the directional bias. So it's positive. So that's not our positive and negative factor. It's just telling us our it's positive, it's a bullish strategy, negative if it's a bearish strategy. So that's why you have the positive and negative deltas. But if you're directional, we're actually going to reduce that. So that's why we have to talk about that. Gamma is good for long options because gamma is the acceleration. Gamma will tell you delta's new value. So that's something we want when we purchase options. If I am largely directional and I, I profit from a sharp movement in my desired direction, I want to accelerate to that movement, to my desired direction, to that destination. That's where gamma comes into play. So that's why it's positive for long options and negative for short options. And then vega, if we have an increase in implied volatility, that makes the options premium more expensive and that's why it's positive for long options, because if it makes the option more expensive, it goes up in value. That's my goal when I'm purchasing options is I want it to have as much value as possible, whereas the inverse is true for short options. I want them to deplete in value because I recognize my maximum profit potential if it expires worthless. So that's why we have positive vega for long options and negative vega for short options. So really quick overview of the Greeks that um, we'll expand on. This is certainly not a session on the Greeks, but when we are trading directionally, it is important to know, especially with multi-leg options, keeping the structure to your directional bias and 
what positive and negative factors are on your side. And when we are look, talking about long butterflies, utilizing calls and puts, you are basically building that off of a base strategy, which is a long call for the bullish side and a long put for the bearish side. And then we're just going to structure from there. So we'll, we'll start with this and then move on. Are there any questions on that before we move forward, actually? Ask him for questions right at the beginning. I know that's fairly, really rare. <laughs> what affects Mark's change in gamma? Not yet. Great. Um, gamma is centered around at the money options and increases as we get closer to expiration to answer that question. All right, so let's start. And there there actually are very few slides today. We're gonna use more real examples because I think that would be more beneficial for this type of discussion. But when we have a long call, if you attended the last session, expect you to know this really, really well. We purchased the long call. So in this example, ABC 150, 30 days till expiration for $5. That's the most that we can lose, right, is $5. At expiration, we needed to move up by the premium that we paid, so to 155. That's when we break even, and our gains begin as soon as we're above that 155. So we're, we're looking for strong upwards directional movement. You know, at options play, we look at that three to one risk reward ratio. That's something to consider. Rarely do we, you might you rarely do you see on a daily play or whenever we talk about trades, a single legged option trade like this, because when you're purchasing an option, you're purchasing the time value and a way to mitigate that is the give and take. So the, which is creating a bull call spread where we cap our gain potential. When we cap our gain potential. So in this case, I'm selling a further out of the money option, a less valuable option. So 160, because the right to buy at 160 is definitely less favorable than 150. It's going to be less of a premium. That's why this is called the strategy driver because the all of the Greeks, or not all of the Greeks, but when we initially structure this, the, the long option, this long call is the directional bias. This is going to drive the entire strategy. So just keep that in your mind when we are building and this will be comprised of bit of four contracts total but three calls all together. So when we have our long option at our 150 strike, we sell away. So this is the give and the take. The give is we're receiving a premium of 150. That reduces our break even from 155 to 153.50. So by that 150 that we receive, which is helping a risk reward, but the take is we've capped our upwards potential at 160. So if it goes above 153.50, we're participating in that capital appreciation. But as soon as this underlying security goes beyond 160, there's no reason to hold this. Everything's going to change. There's no reason we're at our maximum profit potential. That's the give and the take. And the purpose of this is to reduce the cost of your overall strategy. And oftentimes the question comes up, and since we're building, I'll, we'll go ahead and answer it now. When would I do a long call versus when I would do a bull call spread? We would do a long call when implied volatility is really low. We expect an increase in it. So there's no, it, it seems cheap, quote unquote. And you have a very strong directional conviction with no abundantly clear area of resistance. That's when I would say, you know what, this long call is really minimal in cost. I'm going to go ahead and purchase this. I don't feel the need to cap my upwards potential because I don't need to reduce the cost any further. However, that's why technical analysis is such a beautiful thing. You could see a strong area of resistance, a strong area of supply, in which case you'd say, you know what, when ABC or whatever security rallies to that Point, I don't think it's going to go any higher. Therefore, I'm okay accepting that as my capped gain potential and in exchange, I'll receive that premium. Now you're skewing risk versus reward in your favor, especially if the long option seems a little more expensive. And if it's super expensive, then that's where the butterfly really comes into play. So we'll move on from there. Um, if that makes sense, suppose we should have done on a one. So we'll go ahead and do a two. Just, just 
throw that in there. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the Greeks, because I think it's important when we structure this. Um, and we are looking at a bull call spread and a bear call spread. I did not intend to have this bear call spread on there, but that's absolutely fine. But your delta is still going to be positive. Your theta can actually be negative or positive, depending on how you structure it, because theta is centered around at the money options. Theta, gamma, and vega are centered around at the money options. So that means with whatever the underlying security is closest to will drive these strategies. So that's why when you net it together, it will tell you it's directional bias because this is the deeper in the money, the higher the delta is going to be. So that's your directional bias. But the structure, since that's why strike selection is so important because these adjust because they're centered around at the money options, which means these are gonna change as your underlying moves. Great example, if this, uh, the same 150, 160, if the underlying security goes well above 160, this is gonna to flip to negative. This is going to flip to negative. This would probably be positive because time decay will help you. And you've created a whole different strategy. And it's just an example of what the Greeks do that are just clearly abundantly saying you from a math and data perspective, close this strategy. Um, I like to call that useless information that helps prove a point. <laughs> Nonetheless, moving on. So we have a long call butterfly. Here's how we would structure this together. It is essentially a, there are a couple ways to look at it. One is this bull call spread in combination with a bear call spread. That would be your neutral view. If you are strongly directional, that's where we would have a broken wing butterfly, which we're going to talk about when I bring up the options play tool. I've got a couple of examples as well. But what it looks like, and that's why profit and loss diagrams are so great. You would sell two calls here. When I sell two calls here, so at the 160, I've doubled up. So now I have $3. I would reduce my overall cost individually to two. But because you have a short call, an extra short call, that's considered naked. So the way that the options would pair at your brokerage firm, that would require the highest level, a level five normally, because you have a naked call, which has unlimited risk potential. So in order to offset that, you'd have to create that bear call spread, which is, which is here, which is the security that profits because it is a neutral, a bearish to neutral trade, as in you want the underlying to stay exactly at 160 and not move any higher because that's when losses begin. But if it moves lower, then that's you're still at your maximum profit potential. So when you pair this up directly like this, that's why it becomes neutral. And depending on where you structure it, if the, oops, going too fast. So as it goes to 150, it reaches all the way up to 160, you're at your maximum gain potential and you've reduced your overall cost considerably, but as the underlying security begins to rally, it turns into its bear call spread side, and that actually could start begin gaining losses. So you're you're going to start losing your value and then could actually have losses if it goes too high. But there's a way to structure this to adjust it. So I'm actually gonna stop on the long calls and bring up some real examples, and then we'll flip it back to long puts. But this is your normal textbook definition of a long call butterfly. I rarely structure it this way. I'd rather it be a broken wing if you're directional. Otherwise you have to also account for time decay and that's an extremely important component of it. Um, if that made sense, please type a three in the chat for me. And a bull call spread is not the same as a butterfly, but we were all about to to show you the difference there, but give me one moment to pull that up. All right. and share. All right. So I just brought up American Express because that was something I was looking at 
earlier today and I lost the chat window. Let me pull that back up. So here is how I pulled this up. So first and foremost, we've got just a long call. Our long call for a slightly in the money on American Express is $945. That's slightly in the money because it contains the right to buy at $175. American Express is at $178. So that's in the money by $3.86, roughly four dollars so this really is is 545 in my mind that it has to overcome as in the extrinsic value that's about doing math in my head there that's rather expensive and that's why it has a low options play score and you'll also notice that 60 days was pre-populated in here and that's accounting for theta decay because when we buy options we also want to sell them prior to expiration we want to, so we're buying time. We want to sell to close time as well. You hold an option till expiration, that equals risk. So the way we would reduce that is this bull call spread. So this is a 175. Now we're capping our upwards potential at 190. You can see how it reduced the cost to 677. Our max reward has been, it's not unlimited, it's not unlimited, but we've capped it when American Express reaches 190. So we reduced the cost exponentially. Still not a great options play score because remember that takes into account your price target where you feel like the underlying is going to go um, within the specified time frame, so on and so forth. So if you add a broken wing butterfly, so this is a broken wing and you can see that by the profit and loss chart. And that's because the width as in the, I think it's easier to see if I hit the modify button, the 175 to 190, The this is five points, which is way more than this here. So that's why it's considered broken is the width is not the same. It's not equidistant. So what this does, actually prefer it on the modify button to explain it. And is this big enough? Um, I'm working off again, my laptop and make this a little bigger. So as the underlying security, so this is, this is your long call as the underlying security moves up to 190, this is my maximum profit potential. That cost me 677. What this does is there are two calls that are sold here that reduces the cost even more, but because of the unlimited risk potential, I have to buy a call to offset it, which is where this flat line is at 195. And that is where, that is not the sweet spot. We want it still to go to 190, but the way that this is structured is if it does go past 195, you still will have profit. Otherwise, if we were to structure this to be equal, then it it you would end up in a loss area. And that's is not, um, you could do that, but then that's a different type of strategy. You're more neutral. So that's one example with um, American Express that I already had up. We can build one from scratch if you guys have a stock that you want me to pull up real quick. And then we'll talk about how we decide on the width and the expiration. I like ribbon. Let's do that. So Rivian Automotive, uh, a little bit illiquid. So we need to account for that. IBV is not bad. Okay. But there was two in there for that. So why not? So first and foremost, if we're bullish on this, let's to peek at the chart. I'm going to start with just a long call. By default, options play will always give you around 60 days when we're buying options. When we go to a broken wing butterfly, you are adding in that bear call spread, which is normally defaulted by 45 days. So I actually would compare and contrast 60 and 45. So we will do that as well. So let's take away the buying 100 shares. And I want to just look at buying the long call. And we're going to look at, what is it, 22, three. Uh, 
I'm going to put it on the midpoint too, because it says somewhat liquid. I want to make sure that I look at the in between the bid and the ask. Perhaps we do. It defaulted us to a 20. So let's just do the default. Why not? And for easy math, that is so deep in the money. That is not seen. Oh, that's the expiration. I see. Okay. Now let's add on and do a bull call spread. And by default, it's doing the 30. I'm going to do the default and then we'll adjust. So that's one standard deviation. 82 cents reduces our cost to 296. That's reasonable. So what we want to think about here is this is 10 points of gain that we can make. That's going to cost us about $300. So as in from 20 to 30, so the 10 points, that's 300. That is better than the three to one risk reward ratio. That's why it's giving you a better than 100 score. So that's good. I can make three times as much as I'm spending than this because my maximum gain is 10. I'm spending about $3. That's where that's coming from. Now to modify this, and adjust and see how we would structure or perhaps maybe reduce this cost even more. But again, that is still favorable. If this was not three to one, that's this is when this really makes sense. So this may not be necessary because remember there is a give or take. So I would add another call. So this reduces my cost more, but now I have unlimited risk potential. So I wanna add another call that's further out of the money. Maybe we'll do a 30. Well, there we have no option, actually. There is no more. So this was a bad example. Uh, let's see. We could, maybe there are more strikes on a uh, less expiration. Let's give that a try. So we've got 20 to back to the 30. And there is a 35 here. So let me just adjust these so we can compare and contrast properly to the 45-day expiration. Okay, so now we have about 45 days until expiration, 43. This one's costing us 350. We have unlimited gain potential. We've reduced our cost minimally by selling that 30 call, and we've got a minimal cost reduction here at 288. So considering risk versus reward, because remember, that's what we're going to think about. This reduces it and we're considering where we think the stock's going to be and we created a broken wing butterfly. So now the way that I would adjust this and compare and contrast, we don't, unfortunately, there aren't enough options available for Rivian where we could look at 60 versus 45. So I apologize. That was a, that, that didn't work out as a good example, but um, I still would want to look at the profit and loss simulator and understand what would happen where I think the stock's going to go. So perhaps we look at the chart and this high here looks about closest to 30. So maybe we think it's going to go um, to, let's say it does go all the way to our high price point of 30. What does that look like? This is where we can compare and contrast. We'll make slightly more on the broken wing butterfly, still pro very profitable on all of these, but you can see the difference of cost. You can see what happens if it goes super, super far. We start reducing our profit on the long call butterfly because it's going beyond our 30 or, or like past our 30. That's when we start beginning our loss potential. Whereas this is capped and our profit will stay as high as 688. And then this, of course, will um, have unlimited gain potential, but expiration is also a very key component. And that's why we want to adjust and understand this in addition to an increased and implied volatility. So essentially, the purpose of structuring a long call butterfly is to reduce your overall cost. I saw somebody said, let's look at something with Netflix. Let's let's do that. And I, I saw that someone said, why is it a liquid with an, a volume of 85 million? That is the underlying security. When we're talking about liquidity, that is the options contracts. You can even have Apple have illiquid options um, in certain series. 
or depending on on farther even deeper in the money because options do not trade like stocks. But yes, we can look at Netflix. So Netflix is down today. I think they're going into gaming. Might be a good opportunity. So let's take a look at that. Same thing. Let's look at the call. Put it on the mid. And we want to do 60 days. 465. Now this is a more expensive stock. So think about this in percentage terms. And then let's structure our bull call spread. So we'll add a call. We have to cap our gain potential. We're going to do that at, let's do 540. So that's one standard deviation. That's the way that this is set up. Still have a decent risk versus reward. And here is where I may want to reduce my cost even more. So we'll sell two. That's number one, as we'll say, let's double up on where my short call is. But because I doubled up where my short call is, let me go ahead and add something that is less favorable. So higher than that 540. We will look at... Five sixty-five to reduce my overall cost. So in this case, to really structure this, trying to see its area of resistance on this very, very tiny chart. So it's got this gap that it has to feel, fill around so this, this 500 area. That's probably a really strong area of resistance. So perhaps it'd say, you know what? I don't think that this will go higher than 500. I may adjust that. And we could adjust this. Maybe to 510. And then of course we wanna compare and contrast. So I wanna make sure we've got something equal to adjust. Okay, so you can see here how it reduces your cost considerably, but remember it's the give and the take. And that's how this tool is so helpful in helping you structure those trades in order to have those proper risk versus reward. And so if you see something that has a higher implied volatility rank, I think that was a, a question earlier, that's where this is here. This is lower. So finding a, a long call or a bull call spread would probably be something that, that is absolutely fine and, and easier to do, but you can structure the trade utilizing multiple options to what, what we've done here is we have minimized our costs, which means we're minimizing our theta exposure, which is a negative factor when we're purchasing options because it's structured where the long option, which is where our direction needs to be, that 465, we could even move it closer up. Um, you know what? Let's even look at that. Do a uh, 470 to reduce our cost even more. So we reduced our costs all the way down from $3,000 for one call to $1,036. That's, that's the way you would structure this to get risk versus reward in your favor. So this is now turned into a good example. And hopefully I, I we explained it well enough where you, you saw the change. That's why I wanted to have the three side by side. Nonetheless, as the security moves up, we now have a clear point that we defined that gap that it needs to fill at 500 where we have our solid conviction of where that area of resistance is going to be. That's a 30 point move that we're allowing ourselves because we structured this 
long call closer to the money. It has our higher gamma, which is our acceleration. So we allow that. And then the 510 is going to be lower because it's farther out of the money. So we gave ourselves 30 points of movement. And then if it moves 10 points too much, we still are profitable. So that's the way that we structured this to have a better risk versus reward. And I hope that made sense there. Okay. So are there any questions on that? And then we can look at puts real quick. How do you get a, um, David, I get that question often actually as let's plot an options price. Remember the option is a derivative that's based off of the underlying security. So when you're charting, um, definitely use the underlying security and not the option, but you can do that in brokerage firms platforms, just put in the symbol, but there, I see no, I personally see no reason to do that. Um, Serene, when the volume of the options are low in volume, but in ask prices difference is too much for me to consider. It, it does get very wide and that's it. When that happens, that's why the liquidity score is, is there, but that's when limit orders are prudent. You protect your price. Um, Serene, I think that is a statement rather than a question, but I think it leads to a very valuable point. You can structure into these trades as well. You don't, you can have a long call and you're still largely directional or even a bull call spread, and then create this over time. You don't have to enter this trade all at once. The same goes with closing. Um, I actually did this on the QQQs recently, and it absolutely worked in my favor. Um, there, there was going to be an increase in implied volatility, and it reached my resistance point, and I had a, a, a uh, broken wing butterfly on. I went ahead and closed the call side before it could go through my strikes. So you can you can do that. You can you can absolutely close out your trade when it's optimal or moves adversely because now you have remember you have a bear call spread and a bull call spread in this case put together. Um, yeah. So if we just want to reduce the cost of acquisition, we do a broken wing. But if we think the stop will remain in a range, we do a regular butterfly. So if you think you'll do a range, that may be a different type of strategy. The broken wing allows you to be directional, and if it moves too far, still be profitable. And we're structuring that with the underlying security at the lowest strike price. That's very important to consider. If you were going to keep it equidistant in your spreads, that's where you also have a time play where you, you're still neutral in a way. Call it an unbalanced butterfly. Sure, broken wing butterfly is the, the common name. There is a difference between a butterfly and an iron butterfly, yes. Um, how do I determine if the underlying... Okay, so how do I determine if the underlying is bullish or bearish? So that is your personal process at options play. That's what this green line means. It will indicate the six month trend, but we also give you the one month and the six month trend, just calling it bullish or bearish. And right here on this chart at the bottom, these little bars gives you the one month trend and the six month trend. And what normally happens is the one month trend, the shorter term trend will turn prior to the longer term. So right here is a good example. The one month trend started turning bullish and then the eventually the longer term trend turned bullish. Doesn't always play out that way, but it's normally an early indication. So early indication of bearish, the longer term trend was bearish and followed suit. So that's the what these do is it pulls if you do not have the technical indicators or technical process that you like, that's what this tool is designed to, is just say, this is the one month trend, this is the six, six month trend. It's considered bullish because of the six month trend, then it will pre-populate the bullish strategies 
that uh, are associated with that. Okay. And Serena, I like that question. Is it okay to short put spread to offset the butterfly bind? Well, now you've got some concentration on one underlying security and creating a whole other strategy, but you're still arguably very, very bullish. It's just, are you directional as well? Is what I would, I would ask myself when doing that. Meaning I wouldn't structure a, I'm structuring a bull call spread or that broken wing long call butterfly because I expect a sharp directional movement. And if I'm going to set the capital aside for that short put, I'm the risk versus reward may not be in my favor if you look at everything net together, which would be a whole nother conversation, but it's a great question. And, and I like the thought process there. All right, so let me stop sharing and we'll go to the puts real quick. I hope you're okay with the questions in between. I felt like it was necessary this time. like the question about rotation too. Okay. So long puts, this is just the other side of the chain. That's where that T-chart is extremely helpful when just understanding positive and negative factors, putting the options puzzle together. And hopefully this will add some clarity as to why we focus on long calls first when understanding options, because you can utilize that chart to really put everything together. This is going to be the same exact concept just the directional bias is downwards. So again, buying that put, you pay $5. That is the cost of the trade. I need to overcome the cost of the trade. I have substantial gain potential because I have a downward directional bias. The stock can only go to zero. So it's considered substantial, not unlimited. That's my, my risk reward and goal. The bear put spread, just like the bull call spread, but it's called a bear put spread because it's purchased and our directional bias is downwards. I have capped gain potential. So I'm structuring at a less favorable price, a less favorable strike price because the strategy driver is the long put in this case. That's gonna reduce my overall cost because it reduces my overall cost. It reduces the break-even point or the amount that it has to move for me to begin to be profitable. And that's that's the give and the take is the capped gain potential. So there's my, my bear put spread. Now we'll explain this a different way. We just went through the bear put spread a bull put spread is similar in a way. Just the strategy driver in this case would be the short put. And since I have the short put, remember my goal for short options is I want them to expire worthless. That's when I realize my maximum profit potential. In this case, that occurs as long as the underlying security remains above 160 because it's a bullish strategy. That requires substantial capital, which is the obligation to buy 100 shares of ABC at 160. To reduce that capital, I just have to reduce my risk. That reduces my margin requirement. So I buy a less favorable option. So an out of the money option, a 150, same expiration, same amount of contracts. That will reduce the premium that I receive. That's the take. The give is I have less risk because now I capped my risk potential if I'm wrong and it moves below 150. So this is the 150 line where the loss is, it's capped no matter how wrong I am and the underlying security goes, but my gain is capped by the premium that I received. In this case, very minimal, that risk reverse reward is, isn't that great? Now, same concept, just explained it a little differently. This is that time component. Here is where we put both trades together. So we are bullish to a point, as in we need the security to stay. This is our, our bull put spread. 
right at 160 or above 160. But if we're bearish and we think the stock's going to decline only to 160, and if it declines any further, we actually end up in losses. So that's why there was a question earlier on, so I just do a regular butterfly if I'm neutral and I think the stock is going to stay in a range, or do I do a a um, broken wing. And it really depends on your structuring as in where the underlying security is when you position this together. That is really what makes the difference. I honestly haven't seen many people actually trade this like this. It's structured more of a broken format because it's purchased and, and directional. Otherwise you're looking for credit right here and no movement whatsoever. And you might be better off doing, this would really a straddle or strangle and utilizing calls and puts instead of just puts in that case. That's where I would just look and compare and contrast with different trades. All right, um, so those are those. Bring back options play again, and we will talk about the put side. Are there any stocks anyone's bearish on you'd like me to pull up? While I bring that back up. Microsoft. Or a snap. No, I am not bearish on Microsoft. I know there has been, with this huge rally, some sell-off in the mega cap, but it's rotation, not sell-offs. They've gone so high, and there's growth opportunities now that we've got this pivot, pivot elsewhere. But if you are if you are bearish, I will I will pull it up. But I am not, <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to psychologically do this. Um, all right, maybe Alibaba. But nonetheless, if you are bearish on Microsoft, let's look at a few things. So we know it's liquid; it has a low implied volatility. So first and foremost, I just want to see where the long puts are. That is not, it's a pretty, pretty high. Pull back to 365, okay. Uh, maybe to that area of support, I can get on board with that. So let's say we're expecting a pullback, it's 365, like Ronald said, and I can, I can get on board. Well, that's where we are right now. So if that's the case, I would not look at this type of trade whatsoever from a directional view. I honestly would go into selling a, bull put spread where it stays above 365 and I keep my premium. Uh, let's see if there's any other areas of support that I could convince myself on. I can't. Um, 345, all right. So let's say we think that the stock is going to go to 345. So we've got our long put, we will do our 60 days until expiration. The, let's see, three, let's see if there's anything better there. All right, we will do, we'll go with at the money as it defaulted. Actually, it defaulted at a 370. Little in the money. Want to make sure I have that pre populated because there's an algorithm that's running there. So let's go ahead and modify this, build our bear put spread, just add a put, change this to sell, and we are going to sell the 330s or even the 345. So we've got some high conviction of where we think it's going to pull back to. So let's do the 345s. And that's not a terrible risk versus reward. That's why it's giving us a high um, options play score. But if we are strongly directional and we want to reduce that risk in case we're wrong, because it is Microsoft, 
let's go ahead and look at that. So let's modify, we're going to stick with 345. Um, we will double up on that. So now we've really reduced our cost. Let's go ahead and add a put at maybe 340. So the way I would look at this is I'm selling 640, but in, to get another 640, but in order to get another 640, I have to pay five dollars and thirty cents. So really, that's that's about a dollar. I don't think that's worth it to reduce my cost by a dollar. So I would adjust. That's where this is coming from. So we could five seventy one. So if I'm if I'm bearish and I think there's going to be a pullback to three forty five, here's a broken wing, uh, long put butterfly that will still profit if it moves really far, too far down, but I've reduced my cost from all the way from 1500. This is a good example. So purchasing the call outright is costing us $1,500. That is a huge cost for the reward potential that we are considering. So let's go ahead and even say where we think it's going to go. 345. And we think it's going to do that, not on expiration, but maybe by roughly a month from now. And let's say, I mean, if that, if it falls, I would expect implied volatility to increase, which would work in our favor for the long options, not on the short. And I should have been doing that here so you could see my adjustments. But now we can compare and contrast what would happen. So in this case, we actually would make um, more money here. But in comparison to our cost and uh, profit potential, this is structured very, very well. So looking at risk versus reward is so, so important. And this is a wonderful example. So despite my trepidations, thank you for that, that recommendation so we can at least structure a good versus, risk versus reward. So buying the put outright, $1,500, that still meets the criteria to give it a good options play score, which is that, 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 that risk reward ratio that we're talking about. The give here is we are capping our profit potential if it goes as low as 345, which is our target that we have high conviction of. We're doubling up on that, but because we're doing that, we're capping our loss potential at 335. So we've reduced our cost almost by $1,000, about $900 here with the same target in mind. So that's a really great way to show the purpose of that broken wing butterfly. All right. Um, and I see you asking for an adjustment at 365. Why not? Real quick, I'll adjust them all to 365 and move on. All right. And then in this case, now our, since it's closer to the money, I suppose, we are really reduced our cost here to 378. So if you want to take that gamble, minimal cost, great options play score. I don't think I've seen one above 200 in a very long time. So that means risk versus reward is really in our favor of where we think the pullback is going to go. And then we can, of course, look at that with our profit and loss. We think it's going to go to, we set 345. And mid-Jan maybe. So you can see with structuring it this way, made 173%. And if you want to even compare and contrast more with different strike prices and you know that you want to do this butterfly, then we can add on from here. So you don't have, you can compare the same strategy. You don't have to compare all strategies, but uh, this did end up being a great example. So thank you for that. All right. So we are at time. Are there any other questions? I know we've we've had them throughout, so I wanted to make sure we do that because of the way that I've structured this. And sometimes 
the three and four legged options can be a bit overwhelming, but hopefully this made some sense as to structuring directionally and how to reduce your overall cost. The purpose and the main takeaway is when I am buying options, my I am buying extrinsic value and that is a negative factor. And this is a way to still be directional, but reduce those negative factors as much as possible. Um, so if we can't afford to buy a debit spread, is there a reason to do a butterfly? The It's not affordability, it's risk versus reward. So that's a really great question. I I would focus on, it's not how much is this costing me? It it's That's definitely a component of it, but it's how much is this costing me versus how much will it make me? That's the difference. So this technically is making more in terms of dollars, but in terms of percentage, this is structured structured much better, as in the same price point. That's why it's important to consider where you think the stock is going to go. Um, I do believe this video will be on YouTube, yes. Gerard says, they always say that if an option has a high volatility vega, and you want to do a long trade, use the long vertical spread to neutralize the volatility. How does this work? That is a great, great question there. So if you have a high implied volatility, so Vega and implied volatility are not the same. Vega will tell us the change in implied volatility and how it will adjust our premium, one point change in volatility. So you are selling the option, so therefore that's why it reduces it. So you you net positive and negative factors together, essentially. You neutralize the volatility exposure. That's what a bull call spread does, or a, any type of vertical spread does, is you neutralize the positive or negative factor in this case, in which case right there would be big. Uh, Robert, trend is bullish while looking at bearish options. That is because I asked for an example of where we felt a bearish stock would be, and I took one from the audience, and that was Microsoft. I am personally bullish on Microsoft, so it's hard for me to do. Um, let me check the Q&A, too. Would it make sense to apply that strategy, but with a covered call, meaning sell two covered calls for 100 shares and then buy the extra call? Uh, you could. That is still going to be structurally very, very similar because when you've got your 100 shares, that is going to be your delta of one. You're going to double up at what point two delta. So now you're going to reduce that even further. So you're still, it, it's structurally very, very, very similar. But the idea there would still be accounting for capital appreciation, but maximizing your premium in this case. But very similar. I'm sure that strategy has a name. Sure, you can model synthetics on options play. Absolutely. You can put any, you can structure any trade on here. It can be custom. It may not, there are um, predefined defaults. There are 42 of them. So when we hit modify, that's what these are. But you can, I didn't select these. So you saw me build it and then it, it intuitively knew that I was creating a long put butterfly, but you can build whatever you want. Okay. I think we're almost done with questions. I'll take Mark's question last. Does Options Play Platform have a section that one can do practice trades and learn? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can actually paper trade on here and add it to your portfolio. 
Let's see if I can minimize this so I can actually see my whole screen. But we can add this entire trade to our portfolio. You can use that for monitoring. You can have it, it's like, it's like a glorified watch list, if you will. And Gerard, if you send a message to info at optionsplay.com, we are happy to explore that. But um, sorry, I'm not explaining myself. Uh, hit trade. So say I want to add this to my portfolio. Just go ahead and hit trade. You can create a new portfolio, add a watch list, but um, I don't want to add it there. But let's say I want to add it to my portfolio. I just hit add position. You can adjust your premium. So if you did this in another account, for example, or you just want to monitor everything together, then it will show up on your uh, portfolio tab over here. But great question. And it's also a good way to learn and monitor. You can also compare and contrast. Even if you don't trade it, you can put the long call, the bull call spread, and the butterfly to see what happened. Um, Gerard, I will make sure that we pull your question. I apologize. You did not get a response for that. And same with Amy. Okay, make sure I write that down. No problem. Had a, a, a lot of life events at options play. You guys haven't noticed, so I apologize. All right, so that will wrap it up for today. Um, this is actually the last session for 2023, so we will not be here the next two weeks. So really appreciate the wonderful community at options play. And if you guys have any other concepts that you want for um tony's going to come back in january he's got his sessions ready to go yes there will be a replay if you want anything focused in february please let us know and i'll make sure that i pull that together these two sessions or last three rather were really based on strategies that you wanted to see so if there is strategies you want more information on, you want other concepts or for us to cover anything else, please let us know in that, in this chat and, and I'll make sure that we do that. Really glad everyone enjoyed it. All right, we'll have a great year, everyone. And we'll see you, see you next year.